In this episode, we start a new series called the Icons of MC Culture. And today I want to bring to you two diamonds that I personally hold in high regard to set this one off. And we're going to talk about the first Puerto Rican pagan of all time, Gano. We're going to talk about the legendary Scott Jr. Erickson, author of the unknown Mongol 1 and 2. And we get into it on this episode of Demons Row TV. And oh yeah. We ghosting, baby. Big shout to the ghosts and the ghost sets. Welcome to Demons Row TV, the holy grail of MC culture, where we cover everything motorcycle and motorcycle club involved. I'm Sos the Ghost. I'm your host for the evening. And today we start a new series, the icons of MC culture. And I wanted to set this off with two people that have been diamonds so long that they were diamonds when I was in my diapers. So if you wanna keep shows like this running and you wanna support the role, get your Ghost of LE mask now. They're on www.demonsroad.com and follow our Sos the Ghost channel. I'm gonna be releasing my solo project once we get those numbers up. So go, I'm gonna link that in the description. Go follow the Sos the Ghost channel and let's get into this. Gano was born in Puerto Rico, December 24th, 1939. He moved to Connecticut in early 1958, where he immediately started running with street gangs. It didn't take long for trouble to find them, so he picked up and moved to Jersey in 1959, where he started running with the Pace Setters MC. In 1960, he joined the Hell's Wheels MC. In 1964, he started partying with the New Jersey Pagans MC, where he told the Mother Club chapter he wanted to be 1%. He was informed the only way to become a 1% at that time was to take somebody else's. Later that day, he got into a fight with a member of the Diablos Motorcycle Club at a motorcycle shop show in New York City where he earned his 1% diamond. In mid-1964, he prospected for the Pagans Motorcycle Club. At that time, there were no Spanish or Blacks allowed in any of the big four motorcycle clubs. So at Mother Club, they thought he was Italian. Shortly thereafter, he became the first 1% Puerto Rican on the East Coast and possibly in the world. They named him Connorelli to drive in the fact that he was Italian. Once he was patched in, the cat was out the bag and the whole world knew that they had the first 1% Puerto Rican. And he was a bad mother effer. He ruled Elizabeth, New Jersey, Pagan's chapter with an iron fist from 1964 till he ended up getting a 35 year prison sentence for handling club business. Once he was finally released in 2002 and off parole, he hit the streets like he had never left and enforced the pagan's will upon the streets of New Jersey. Sometime in 2009, he became a member of the pagan's motorcycle club, Mother Chapter, where he continued to represent the club and the 1% lifestyle with a level of viciousness and righteousness unmatched by all. 2018, Gonorelli and the Pagans went down to Puerto Rico and took the country by storm, where there's still a huge presence of Pagans today. He has been the benchmark in Pagan and 1% excellence. His entire life, he is still the baddest MF on the East Coast and rides his bike everywhere. He goes 100 miles an hour to this day. Gano's story is important and he blessed certain clubs to even have the diamonds that they have right now. He's a legendary figure on this East Coast side. The reason why his story is also important is because the media will tell you that the pagans are a neo-Nazi club, they're white supremacists. They bring up all these names, but there's a chapter in Puerto Rico. There's a lot of Puerto Rican pagans on the East Coast, in New York, in Jersey. So everything that they say is not true. Are there times where, you know, Gano did his time and a lot of time at that for being a one percenter. But he is definitely an icon in this culture. Much respect, Gano, one percent. 
Pagan's MC. Now let's talk about Scott Jr. Erickson, Mongols MC, joining the San Diego Dago chapter of the Mongols Motorcycle Club in 1980 at the young age of 20 is how Scott Erickson got his nickname Junior after serving prison time for the first retaliation in a well-known war against the Hells Angels. Junior became the youngest national president of the Mongols Motorcycle Club at the young age of 28. Serving as a national president in 1988 to 1989, then again from 1996 to 1998. Junior has also been a member of seven different chapters and a founder of three. In 1998, Junior, the national president of the Mongols Motorcycle Club had been convicted of assault with a deadly weapon. Because he was an ex-felon and it was his second strike, he got sentenced to 14 years in state prison. In his book, The Unknown Mongol 2, he takes you through the unforgiving steel doors of prison and experience the ins and outs of Los Angeles County Jail, the closest place to hell on earth, then on to California State Prison. Now being a member of the Mongols MC for over 40 years, Junior is currently a member of three chapters. He has held every office obtainable in the club and become one of the most recognized and respected in the outlaw biker world. And Junior has two very famous books, The Unknown Mongol 1 and 2. This one, the first one, is so crazy. This is like, I've said it before, I did a video on my Souls to Ghost channel and I was talking about it. This and Rich Dad, Poor Dad are my two favorite books. He killed it. This is like a movie. In part two, the cover is badass. You could get those at scottjuniorerickson.com. Everything will be linked inside the description. His story is amazing and we have a full sit down that is coming up in the next couple of weeks. So I don't want to reveal too much on this episode, but you're not going to want to miss it. These two brothers right here, they surpassed 40 years in the club. So they've been riding and been in outlaw clubs before a lot of us was even born or were just babies. They were out there doing their thing in the eighties, putting in work. So I wanted to bring these icons to you. Let me know in the comments, icons, of this culture that you feel should be covered and if it is someone from your club send me a full write-up to demonsrow at gmail.com and let's start giving our flowers now before it's too late make sure you smash that like button i got another video where i talk about motorcycle club patch rules it'll be linked above and thank you for tuning in to demons road tv the holy grail of mc culture like subscribe and comment and no, oh, yeah, we ghosting, baby.